2025 has been really good for MSI. They've been showing off a better, more precise manufacturing process, a much more stable BIOS, and a uber aggressive pricing. But now they're taking the fight to the most, how to say, challenging of fields mini ITX motherboards. About the most unforgiving piece of equipment any brand could try uh, their luck on. So today we're reviewing the excellent MPGB850i HTI from MSI, a board which promises to deliver everything its ATX bigger sibling does. It is also the board which brought back uh, hope to the French Micro Penis Association, which I am the honorary president. I said I would not make uh, small penis jokes, but obviously I don't have that kind of will strength. Starting with the obvious, our B850 ITI Edge sets itself apart with a dense 10 layers low loss signal FS4 PCBs in a mini ITX format, the all reinforced with a couple of 2 ounces insulating copper plates. Now, you won't see that very often. We usually are happy with 8 PCB layers, but in such um, densely populated real estate, you're gonna have some signal issue, signal bleeding issue. And so having a bit more you know, PCB layers will make a world of differences, both in stability, robustness, and even heat dissipation. So my very first big uh, PCB kudos to MSI for this. Design-wise, well, like all the HTIs this year, we are in a snow white theme. From PCB to the cooling blocks, the sanded aluminum reflections marries perfectly well with the white matte PCB. Now, I would have loved to see the heat block fan as well as the plugs, uh, you know, being painted white as well to further uh, strengthen the white theme, but I am here splitting it in two. RGB wise, well, as expected, and thankfully, no tacky embedded LED, but instead we have one customizable RGB Mystic connector to let the world know that you get what Freud meant when he said, let your inner uh, uh, rainbow shine. He never said that. CPU socket wise, our loyal and durable AM5 CPU socket is here to support an ever growing list of processors and will keep on giving for the next two full generations of Ryzen processors. So great future proofing indeed. And chipset wise, well, the B850i Edge is powered by the magnificent budget friendly B850 chipset, which despite not bringing premium options such as the USB 4.0, manages to keep every bit of PCIe 5.0 lanes that more expensive X870 and X870e boards bring. And that is what mainly uh, 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 make this board such an attractive uh, proposition. Now, VRM-wise, we have a very compact single lane power solution aligning 1190M dedicated phases, organized in an 8 plus 2 plus 1 configuration for a 955 amps grand total worth of juice. Now, in this format and with this little space, it is a challenge to operate nearly 900 amps of of, you know, worse of electricity, of power, uh, without having neither a nuclear chain reaction or a signal fight between power stages. So how in application does this VRM fares? First, let's take a look at the single massive cooling block, which shows a compact yet efficient 40 square centimeter of radiating surface fed by 34 dense cubic centimeter worth of aluminum, though all fed by a double contact design plate. Actually, we could call it a triple contact design because the soldered points on the other side of the PCB are also benefiting from a dedicated thermopadded aluminum heat shield. Now, with three watts worth of heat dissipation, it is more than appropriate to handle this VRM heat footprint. Print. Consequently, after running a Mammoth R9 9900X for an hour long of synthetic stress test, temperatures were not only surprisingly low, but stable as well. After a very quick saturation at minute 13, the heat increase ratio stayed ridiculously low, peaking under 55 degrees Celsius uh, at the term of the test. T to be clear, this is not an overclocking monster, 
but you can run an R9 9900X at stock clock consistently without risking, again, a thermonuclear reaction. And that's pretty insane on its own and uh, deserves a big VRM kudos to MSI for this. And I should doing this because I'm starting to have my nail detaching literally from my skin. See that? Memory wise, the B850i HTI will support up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM in a single DIMM dual channel configuration, going up to an obscene 8200 million transfers per second, leaving the competition 200 million transfers per second short. Now, this is obviously half what the DDR5 capacity uh, we usually have on an ATX motherboard, but on the few benefits uh, uh, of having less you know, memory sticks is the fact that you're more likely to get to faster clocks. With the right kind of performance-driven sticks, like the ones featuring the Hynix MDI, such as the Xtreme 5 uh, from Patriot we have here today, we can stably and consistently run memory at 8,000 uh, million transfers per second, which is absolutely rare. In short, with the right kind of, of, of uh, memory sticks, I think you got that. This uh, board is memory steroids. Storage-wise, our board comes with two legacy SATA 3 plugs for uh, that cheap, slow, but massive storage solution. But most importantly, we have two M.2 solid state drive connectors on each side of the PCB. The front one is the only PCIe 5.0 enabled one, meaning transfer swaps up to those top of the industry 128 gigabit per second. And it is also the one to get uh, the hardest, hence the massive thermal padded heat block complemented with a silent active cooling system and even though it takes care of the chipset cooling as well as we've seen before our block keeps both components below the 50 degrees celsius bar which is cool as ice as far as silica goes the back m.2 solid state drive is chipset fed and still can swap data to a plenty fast 64 gigabit per second overall all the promises a b850 board makes are largely kept here export wise our board has just enough space to squeeze in our unique 16 lanes pcie 5.0 enabled slot which can deliver that insane and few future-proofing bandwidth our GPUs will need for many, many years to come. Again, uh, the B850i HTI does what it needs to hold its PCIe 5.0 obligations. Now, most interestingly, back IO-wise, as well, we have a more than healthy amount of USB plugs, seconded by a serious front panel menu of connectors, but I do need to address a few remarks I had received on my channel lately. If you want your plugs to give you those 10, 20 or 40 gigabit per second worth of data transfer, you'll need to get the right kind of memory sticks. If you take a flash drive, it'll get very quickly to about 10 gigabit per second then just crash after a second or so to a fraction of the, of the data rate, of the transfer rate. Instead, to get consistent, continuous 10 gigabit per second transfer, what you will need is not a USB flash stick, but rather a SSD USB stick, like the PVP30s that I have right here. It will get you closer to the 10 gigabit transfer rate and will keep you there the entire time. For anything beyond, say, a 20 or even 40 gigabit per second transfer rate, we, we don't have a 40 gigabit here, but say you had a motherboard. If you want to get there, what you will need is a Zyk box. A four lanes PCIe 4 NVMe external enclosure to swap data up to 64 for gigabit per second. Equip it with a PCIe 4 graded NVMe and you'll get as high as it gets in terms of USB-based transfer rate. There is simply nothing available above that. So in short, it is great to have plugs, but make sure to have the right kind of memory hardware to rip all of its swapping ability. I meant data swapping abilities. Now back to the back IO. We do have a surprisingly premium audio codec here, 4080 uh, from Realtek, which will be benefiting heavily from the 10 layered PCB. So don't be shocked to find a single 100 microfarads worth of capacitors. Now the bright star of this back IO is its connectivity features. The B850i HTI goes above and beyond with a five gigabit LAN instead of a 2.5 SYN on its competing model. 
and a fully fed Wi-Fi 7, which on top of its ridiculously low latency will swap data up to almost 6 gigabit per second compared to only 3 on competing motherboards. Needless to say that the MPG denomination of this board is well earned, yeah, as well as a big connectivity. Kudos to MSI for this. Cooling wise, well, it's a little bit more limited. Huh? We have our three PWM fan connectors, including an all-in-one water pump, obviously not much at all, but this is where the MSI uh, Priority Easy Connector shows all of its usefulness, if that's a word. It will take care of all of your all-in-one water cooling needs and therefore giving us a little more leeway in terms of cooling options. But yeah, do not count on this motherboard to do any kind of, I don't know, intricate custom water cooling thingies. Now, finally, troubleshooting wise, well, we got our usual easy debugger for a vague yet crucial first aid troubleshooting recourse, as well as our clear CMOS and flashback button. But uh, as a more premium MPG graded model, I was hoping to have a, a Q error code, right? Because that is important and, and would have helped to differentiate the BH50 IHTI because it is present on the ATX model and I would love to see from MSI an effort to maybe add it even on the back IO. That, that would be a great add-on. Now, in conclusion, the MSI MPG B850 IHTI will cost you anywhere around 260 to 270 bucks. Now, what I can say for sure is that, well, the market was waiting, nay, begging for this motherboard. Mini ITX motherboards, it's a tricky business. They're hard to manufacture, they're expensive to make, they require more PCB layers, and they usually fail to bring in all the features entailed by the chipset or the processor, or actually I should say the chipset processor combo. But here, the MPGB850 IHTI brilliantly hit every one of its targets. Bullseye from the 10 layered PCB uh, to the PCIe 5.0 perfect integration all the way down to the most premium connectivity you can hope to get at that price range, MSI is murdering its competition. And if you're on the market for a mini size, yet good looking, yet budget motherboard, well, you'd be a fool not to buy this uh, thing. Thank <laughs> you.